Belle Isle. It is the largest island park in the United States and the third largest island in the Detroit River. Originally, Belle Isle was occupied by the Ottawa and Abjawa Native American Indians. The Ottawa and Abjawa have similar customs and speak dialects of the same language. The word Ottawa means to trade. The word Abjawa means puckered for their style of moccasin. The Ottawa and Abjawa people were farming people. The women grew crops of corn, beans, squash, and rice. The men hunted deer and small game with bow and arrows, and they fished from their canoes with spears. During this era, Belle Isle was known as Hog Island. The Ottawa and Abjawa tribes allowed the French settlers to use the island to house pigs, chickens, and other livestock to protect them from the coyotes that were on the mainland. Belle Isle is located between Canada and Detroit. In 1701, Antoine de la Mothe Cadillac and 51 more French Canadians settled on the American territory and named it Fort Pontchartrain du Détroit. Detroit's city flag still reflects this French heritage. Fur trade was an important economic activity at this time, and most of the fur were coming from the Native Americans. James F. Scott. He was one of Detroit's most eccentric bachelors. They say he was a gambler and a practical joker. When Scott died at 79 on March 5, 1910, he left his $500,000 estate to the city to build a fountain on Belle Isle. Scott's fountain took about 15 years to build, and it was finally dedicated in 1925. Cass Gilbert won a competition for the design of this glistening white memorial. In 1763, war began when Chief Pontiac, who was from the Ottawa tribe, and 300 followers attempted to take Fort Detroit by surprise. In an unsuccessful attempt, Pontiac barricaded the fort and was eventually joined by more than 900 warriors from a half dozen tribes. Pontiac defeated the British detachment at the Battle of Bloody Run, but he was able to capture the fort. In October, he lifted the siege and withdrew. Somehow Pontiac made peace with the British Superintendent of Indian Affairs, Sir William Johnson. All of this attention that Pontiac was getting from the British Army created resentment amongst the other Indian leaders. So he became ostracized, and in 1769, he was killed. This film is definitely homage to Chief Pontiac. Christopher Columbus so-called discovered America in 1492. Chief Pontiac was still defending his native land's honor and trying to recapture his territory in 1763, almost 300 years later. At some point in life, doesn't anyone feel a little bad about celebrating Thanksgiving? It's funny, because in 1769, the year Chief Pontiac was killed was also the same year that the Ottawa and Abjawa owners of Hog Island sold the island to George McDougall for a measly eight barrels of rum, three rolls of tobacco, six pounds of vermilion, and a wampum belt. In 1879, Detroit purchased Belle Isle from the descendants of Barnabas Campo for nearly $200,000. It was part of an initiative to beautify Detroit that had begun in 1876. During the 1880s, the island was designed into a public park by Frederick Law Olmsted, the same man that designed Central Park in New York. 1889, a wooden bridge was constructed that connected Belle Isle to the mainland. Harry Houdini staged one of his famous successful Jump from the Bridge acts on November 27, 1906. A bridge was later destroyed by a fire in 1915. A temporary bridge was built until a newly constructed one was built at the cost of $2,635,000. In 1923, what was known as the Belle Isle Bridge was now known as the Douglas MacArthur Bridge. In 1986, the bridge was restored again at the cost of $11.5 million. 1902. The now dilapidated ruins, once known as the Detroit Boat Club, was a boathouse that was dedicated to the team. The Detroit Boat Club put seven members on the U.S. Olympic team. In 1960, DBC crews were invited for the first time to participate in the classic Henley Royal Regatta. Belle Isle is now currently the home of the Detroit Yacht Club. 
Their yearly boat races are now being held. I have many memories at Belisle. Our yearly family picnic was held faithfully at the island like most traders. Our schools took us on field trips to the island. We would visit places like the zoo and the aquarium that is now closed. Now my favorite and best thing left on the island is the Anna Scripps Conservatory, the nation's largest indoor conservatory. I took a visit to the conservatory and interviewed one of their employees, Steve Weaver, who seems to be just as concerned about the island's future as I am. I've worked here at the conservatory in the greenhouse on Belle Isle for about, um, I'd say almost eight years. Uh, the conservatory on Belle Isle, was, the Interscript Whitcomb Conservatory was opened uh, in 1904 and along with the aquarium, they both share the same facilities. And, um, some people just have this misconception that the island is a dangerous place to visit and uh, they're reluctant to come down here or it's too far a drive for them to come down here. When we do have people come and visit, uh, they usually say, you know, wow, I haven't been here in 25 years, I'm surprised it's still here, things like that. And they're pleased that it is still here. Um, in the future, I think there needs to be more uh, public relations. The city needs to do more PRs, play up this, this uh, facility. Currently, Detroit doesn't have a lot to offer tourists. When I meet people who are here in Detroit on a visit, I always recommend Belle Isle because of its beauty and tranquility. It has been tradition in my family for many years to pray at Belle Isle. They say that water brings you closer to God. So when I want to come get a peace of mind in a city that's full of crime, poverty, and political turmoil, I take a quick ride to Belle Isle, and it is there that I let go of all my worries.